All right, so this video, what you're gonna see is this right here, this picture, this video, which you could give a shit about. And the topic is, is super important to the person that is broke or that is wanting to make it better in their life. And the topic is how to survive, how to make more money, how to make good money. And it's not like, man, you need to buy Bitcoin and and sell it, you know, everyday trading. And you know, you get, you know, you buy a car and fix it up and resell it. Fuck all that shit. This is about how to make some money if you're a broke motherfucker. Sorry for the language, but you know, it's my it's my motherfucking video. And I'm 70 years old. I'm retired. I have money in the bank. I'm versus I used to be in the mortgage business and I know almost a hundred percent of the people have less than five months worth of money in the bank. So if a guy's making five thousand a month, he's got less than twenty-five thousand in the bank. He may have a house that's got an equity, but ninety-nine percent of the fucking people out there they're working day to day. They don't even have 30 days worth of money. So here's here's how to make sure you don't end up homeless. So if you're 30 years old, 40 years old, and you're fucking tired of being broke, the first thing you need to do is sit down with yourself and say, what is my simple plan to get the fuck out of this problem and to at least get off the edge of falling off the cliff i.e. I'm broke or I'm in debt or I got a shitty job I mean there's jobs out there I mean you know you're gonna you know mop a floor uh, uh, become a carpenter hell I mean you, most people can't even do that I mean you know so what you're six foot tall and 200 pounds and bench press and you know you're a weight trainer every day you can kick anybody's ass but you know all you got to bicycle because your car broke down and you don't have you don't you that's people i'm talking about all right so here's what you got to do you got to sit down with your phone and if you don't got a phone then sit down at your friend's house with a phone and you got to look at what can you do i mean can you work at a McDonald's you're gonna be up against the Hispanics that work their ass off so maybe bypass the fast food unless you know that's what you got to do do it walk in and apply for a job ask for the job day in and day out and if on the second time they go no man then you got to just walk away and go okay next place next place next place I used to have a Allstate franchise and you had Man, if you didn't dial the phone, is they they used to say dial and smile. I hated that, but it was so I fucking I I that's why I wasn't an agent. I I went ahead and I, I left Nortel. Well, Nortel went under. A hundred year old company went under, and I had to do something because I was fifty six and I wasn't about to retire and burn my money yet. So I did an all state office. So I can't stand dialing and smiling. I can shoot the breeze with people, but I ain't going to dial people. I hate it. People hang up on you, pisses me off. So what do you do? You hire people. And I met a couple people that were damn good at it. They made me money. They made money. But man, that's that's a tough business. And you got to get a license here in Texas. But if you work for, a, a, go, go if you're a guy, go go sell cars. If that is if, but you better be good at it. You got to you got to sales pitch the fuck out of shit. You, you gotta lie almost like oh yeah this is the best car there is but now if you're broke ass broke and don't you know you, you don't even have enough money to go buy uh, some nice clothes so that you can be a car salesman then you gotta start at the bottom and what are you gonna do man i don't know get on a bicycle and ride around the town and, and figure out like or actually better than that sit down on the phone and go what can i do like ca lending there's cash lending places. Uh, they're going to pay you 15 to 18 an hour. 
but they're probably going to pay you 12 an hour if you're brand new at it. But, you know, if you can walk in and you don't stink, you got to look the part, man. You've got to look at least like a decent person. You know, get the haircut, shit shower and shave every day. You got to you got to get after it. After you get a little bit of money in the bank, you can start looking at the better job. The big money or the decent money in today's world is the technology. In other words, the second you're able to get a, a, enough money where you're like living in an apartment with two other guys or whatever, you know, they're smoking their dope all the time or whatever, you've got to get a used computer. Or to be all honest, you can, you can go through Walmart and for like $110 delivered to your door is a refurbished com a Dell computer. And it's got like four gig of RAM shit. It, it'll work. Got to get a monitor. They, they even got, they got the whole ball of wax for like a hundred bucks, 150 bucks with the monitor. And that's, they're, and they're, they're fucking brand new. I've done this about probably 11, 12 times now. I bought them for their Allstate. I bought them for a home because I, these, these damn windows can, if you go out and buy a Dell, you're out $700 and the motherfucker's going to be the same as the $150 computer in a year. It's going to be slow. It sucks, but you've got to learn computer shit. And I mean, basics, you know, how to draft up an email, how to open Outlook, how to use Excel, man. If you learned Excel, and I, okay, now here's where everybody, eh, you don't use Excel. Do you? Fuck yeah, you do. A lot of people use it. I'll tell you what, learn how to do a pivot table. That's like, like mini database. You learn how to do a pivot table and you fucking will make plenty of money in this world. And then you're, you're off doing well. You got an office job with health benefits, but you can't just go apply to Bank of America. There goes a big truck. Can't apply at Bank of America and go. Uh, I know how to use Excel. Will you hire me? Because I'll look at your resume if you know how to type one, which you probably don't. So that means you got to learn Microsoft Word. But you got to get a little experience underneath your belt. So that's your first thing you got to fucking figure out how to do in making money is find a niche that you can do, man. It's just you got to find something. Maybe it's selling shoes. You know, at Academy, maybe, hey, the, the, personally, I mean, I, I, I'm a very safe individual. I'm always be, you know, a Boy Scout and all that sort of shit. I'd work at Academy back there. Now, this is, you know, you, you can't have nine felons and be just out of prison. They're not going to hire you. But uh, if, uh, if, if, if you just got a DWI four or five years ago and nothing else, shit, you can work it. These uh, gun places where they sell guns, and the second you know, because you, you got to know this stuff, but, but they'll let you work there. You know, at the academy, you know, you'll go from cashier or inventory control guy. Inventory control that's my favorite. I worked one time at Standex, and uh, they hired me because they had fucking $25,000 uh, ovens. They, Standex made stainless steel ovens in Mexico and sold them to Pizza Huts and other places. Big, nice shit. You know, like $5,000 and $25,000. Very nice uh, ovens. Well, what the, they hired me because they're like, look, Dan, they're being put on a, a damn truck and they're being, you know, trucks are coming across the damn uh, uh, Mexico border uh, every day. And all of a sudden, we're finding out that there's four and five of these uh, ovens that are missing. Oh, yeah, man, we, we sent it up there to Des Moines, Iowa. Well, Des Moines, Iowa is saying they didn't get it. Uh, the truck driver saying, yeah, he dropped off, of, you know, the 13 boxes. Well, they, uh, what the fuck? What happened to $25,000? So they hired me for inventory control. Basically, inv inventory control is... What the fuck's in the store? What's supposed to be in the store? What came in? What went out the back door, which is what you don't want. That's theft. What went out the front door? You know, did it get, you know, did we count it right? And that happens on, like, fancy shit, like Nike shoes. You know, they'll, they'll order uh, 150 pairs of Nike shoes a week, various sizes. 
at the end of two months they're like hey man we never have any size 12 of those expensive nike shoes no no man our inventory control guy says that there's a 35 pairs back there you know valued at 275 each well go count them guy comes back uh dude there's there's two boxes and they're empty you mean we don't got no size 12 nike shoes no man well fucking what happened to the 35 i'll tell you what happened somebody stole the motherfuckers and then all of a sudden inventory guy our manager comes in or top guy from up at the off corporate offices yeah this is happening at all 970 stores we're losing two thousand dollars a week per store on shoes only hey theft is bad so maybe get in that business <laughs> but but if you're if you're a, a thief and got a record of you know stealing shit yeah you can forget getting that fucking job as an inventory control specialist at, at any place target doesn't want you well, hallmark doesn't want you so you gotta you gotta get your shit together in this world okay I'm giving you ideas i've talked for 11 minutes that's fucking long enough uh, I'll put up another video if this one gets some decent viewing. Uh, if it doesn't, fuck it. I ain't doing it no more. That's it, buddy. Good luck out there. Hope you make it. Isn't that right, Charlie? That is right.